Alzheimer's disease has proven to be difficult and there are several reasons. Uh, one of the reasons I, I'll point to is that Alzheimer's disease as it expresses itself in any one person is different. Well, one of the other reasons that it's been difficult to bring forward new drugs is we've only just really learned about disease and that disease starts way before symptoms and therefore we need to find out how to do these clinical trials in earlier and earlier stages of disease and that just poses a whole set of challenges for us. I think you have to first start by asking well what causes the disease in biological terms in a in molecular as term as possible. So what is the molecular pathophysiology of Alzheimer's? I was heavily influenced by human genetics because human genetics, you know, there are variations in genes that nature is making randomly and uh, each one of those are little experiments of nature and some of those changes, those variations, lead to increased risk of getting Alzheimer's disease. Some of them actually lead to decreased risk of getting Alzheimer's disease. They all pointed to one pathway, really. It was amyloid. So one of the most amazing things about the field of Alzheimer's in the last 15 to 20 years is the way imaging has changed our ability to see inside the living brain of patients. First, the ability to see amyloid, which was absolutely game-changing because for the first time we could positively confirm that a patient was in fact suffering from Alzheimer's dementia and not some other form of dementia. More recently, we've developed tau PET tracers, and with tau imaging, we can now not only see the amyloid, which is generally thought to be the kind of um, match or the trigger that starts the disease, but now we can also image tau, which is thought to be the pathology that sort of carries through more into the symptomatology of Alzheimer's disease. And we can look to see if we modulate some of these uh, risk factors for Alzheimer's disease, such as TRAM2, whether or not we can clear the amyloid or clear the tangles in the form of tau, or whether or not we can change the inflammatory response to the amyloid in the tau. The imaging didn't just help us with accuracy of diagnosis, it helped us with earlier diagnosis, so enabling those clinical trials to get earlier and earlier patients. Uh, it also enabled us to be able to see if, if potential new therapeutics actually were binding to pathology and addressing it. So amyloid imaging, tau imaging, these things are revolutions. And then the question was, well, how do we make the biological changes we want to make, which is to reduce amyloid. Everything was pointing to the fact that there were certain forms of the amyloid protein, certain peptide fragments in particular, that are toxic to synapses, which is the connection between nerve cells, but also to nerve cells themselves. How do we get rid of this toxicity? And that's not an easy thing in the brain. Drugs don't get into the brain very well. We have a little brain barrier to deal with. One leap of faith we had, to, we had to come to was that proteins, even large proteins like antibodies, can actually get into the brain. You know, what we do is an expensive business. And what we do most of the time doesn't work. So you have to really believe that even despite there's going to be a lot of failures, that if you hang in there, that once one time out of 10 is enough, right? Like if we fail nine times out of 10, but we come up with one agent that can make a difference in Alzheimer's disease, that we can change all these lives, that's well worth the investment, right?